The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Everybody and welcome to my brother, my brother and me, the podcast. My name is Justin McElroy. Ring, 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 ring. Sorry, let me get that. Yes, hello. Uh huh. Oh, I would love to, Marty, but uh, yeah, I'm busy recording a podcast. You know, a podcast. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Was, sorry. Uh, this is your middlest brother, Travis McElroy, and this is your baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Hey guys, what are we doing here? What? What it's this? Oh, sorry. I just got a call from uh, Mar- Marty Scorsese. Do you know? Oh, Marty. You know, you know his work? He was just calling. He wants to uh, direct a, a gritty, uh, like, McElroy Brothers-based movie uh, yeah. with a lot of intrigue and betrayal, See, a I lot was, of drug use. I was confused because me and legendary director Martin Scorsese, mm-hmm. and, I, like, over my hours of hanging out with him, like, I did learn the right, the proper right way to say his name. I, I just call him El Scorcho, so... That, um, oh, thank you for correcting that pronunciation, because suddenly that makes so much more sense as to why when you're ribbing him about, like, some mm. of his badder movies, why you call him Martin Scorchese, makes yeah. <laughs> so much more sense to me now. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so me and Scorch, I had Scorcho on the phone the other day. He's like, Departed 2, are you in? And I was like, what's it all about? He's like, get this, Martin Sheen, he's back. Like, he <gasps> super died in the... Yeah, no, he's back. And this time... You're his little brother. I don't even understand how, like, chronologically, don't doubt the scorch, he said to me. Yelled it, even. Uh, Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Jerry. Okay. Yeah, it's (laughs) J-Man. Yeah. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Okay. (laughs) Great. Yeah. Um, Yeah, just send them on over. Bye. Um, Who was that, So that was Jerry Seinfeld. Oh. Uh, He watched the first episode of our TV show, and he is actually um, sending me all his Emmys in shame, he said. Oh, wow. He's embarrassed of his TV show, and he doesn't want the Emmys anymore, and he's sending them to me. That is both both nice and humble of him. That's really sweet of him. He doesn't deserve them. Um, You're saying he saw saw our comedy show, and he says, oh, that's how you do it. I don't deserve all these. I don't deserve all these enemies. I'm going to give them back. Um, oh, hey, hold on one second. Oh, wow, a real phone ringtone. Hold on. Hello? Hey, Joe, how's it going? Do you want to... Oh, today? I'm a little bit... I could. I, we could do lunch today. Pasta... You want to go to Pasta Garden? I don't... I, I think it's Olive Garden. It's all, all... The name of the restaurant is Olive Garden, not Pasta Garden. No, there's not a restaurant called Pasta Garden in Austin. Like, there's not, there isn't, a, that would be crazy if there was a restaurant called Pasta Garden. You get that, right? It's Olive Garden. Okay, fine. I'll meet you at the Pasta Garden. Uh, how, 12.30? Fine. Okay, bye. That was Joe Pantoliano. He's in Austin. Ooh. And uh, he wants to, he was insistent the restaurant was called Pasta Garden. I didn't know what to tell him. <laughs> Joey Pants. Uh, Griffin, I'm sorry. That was so rude of me. I left the sound on, but I actually got a text in the middle of that call. Um, from the Oscars committee, and they said that they were retroactively giving me Leonardo DiCaprio's Oscar. They were going to take it away from him for for his uh, bear movie, and they're going to give it to me now. So he still bear. doesn't have an Oscar anymore. The Bear Challenger, I mm-hmm. believe, was the title of it. Mm-hmm. From Bear Man. The Bear Man it's, movie. From uh, from Leo's ill-fated, uh, gritty Yogi Bear reboot. Mm. <laughs> Um, I love fame. It's so yeah. good. Let's just it's say really it. Let's just say it. I love this stuff, man. Can't get enough. I wish we weren't still under contract to do a thousand podcast episodes, or I would just quit doing this show and focus on being famous all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this podcast has been, uh, I think, about as successful as the medium can get. Has it ever secured me? I one ticket to paradise, by which I mean a 1230 lunch reservation at Pasta Garden with my good friend Joe Pantoliano. No, only television got me there. Only television got me across that beautiful finish line. 
there's just so much power that comes from being on a streaming internet comedy show. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you don't get mm-hmm. that from podcasts. You got to get on the old media, like streaming internet comedy. <sighs> Has it changed things, though? Has it changed things? That's the that's what everybody's wanting to know. That's I a mean, problem. Things. I'm I'm recording this uh, laying down on my polar bear skin rug, but I've always done that. You've so always that's not done new. That. It's that's like when Mike when Michael Jordan was playing um, basketball, wherever he did it before, mm-hmm. he like did it, and then he like did it, and people were like, "Whoa!" And he was like, "Things have changed." Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he was like the best basketball player, and and like as soon as people were like crazy about number twenty three, mm-hmm. he was just like things have changed for me. I think that's that's actually what most people. Oh, oh shit! Sorry guys. Sorry. 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 Hold on. MJ. Oh, it's actually him. Oh yeah, dial him in. MJ. Hey. Yeah. You want me to take? Oh, so I would be twenty three. Oh wow! Okay, and uh, the, wow, it's the call, Travis. And okay, so I'll be twenty three, and you're just gonna give me all of all of your basketballs. Okay, I mean, just from the one episode, don't you want to wait to see the rest of the? Okay, and oh yeah, oh well, the cover of Bad. So I'll be on the cover of all the copies of Bad that they sell from now on. Oh, uh, and then you'll give them stickers to put my face on. Him. Okay, so it's all MJ's. Mm-hmm. Okay. Seems like it. Whoa, Mahalia Jackson, you're on here too. Wow. Okay, so you're going to give me your Grammys as well. So I'll be on the cover of Bad. I'll own Neverland Ranch. I get all the basketballs, and I'm number twenty three. Just from the one up. Ep- you guys don't want to wait to. S- okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Thanks. Yeah, these pretzels are making me thirsty too. Yeah, <laughs> love that shit. Okay. Bye. 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 Ugh. Wow, Juice, that sounded like a pretty big call. Just a lot of MJs giving me their honors and their awards and their uh, recognitions. Well, congratulations for all your... Ah, oh, fucking shit. Hold on one second. Hey, Bryce. I can't today, Bryce. I'm sorry. Bye. That's just my friend Bryce. I, he, wanted, <laughs> he wanted to get lunch, but, and, but I'm obviously I'm spoken for, so... <laughs> This has never been more important that we help people. Oh, oh sorry, just one, more, just one more call. Sorry. <laughs> yes, hello? <laughs> Joseph Gordon Biden. Oh, no. A life debt? Uh-huh. Follow me to the ends of the earth? Uh-huh. Like a Belvedere situation? Okay. Um... Can you start tomorrow? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, I'll have Deborah send over the address. Um, I'll see you then. Okay. Bye. Guys, you'll never believe who it was. Uh, I can't guess. It, it was uh, Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, weird. Okay. Doing a character? <laughs> yeah. He was using his nom de plume, Joseph Gordon Biden. All right, I think it's time that we reveal that these have all been pranks <laughs> that we have done so far. Um, basically, everything you've heard up to this point, except for my friend, my fucking rude friend Bryce calling me, somehow piercing through the do not disturb that I have set on my phone. Like, I don't know how you like hacked into my shit to get the phone call through. But all the other stuff has been just pranks, and we don't know these people, and um, uh, we just this. Is, we hope you enjoyed the. We hope you enjoyed all the stuff we've done so far. We would never do something like that on the TV show. We really save our really fully formed great gags yeah. for our new medium of television. Um, should we do... Please watch our TV show. It comes out on Thursday on CISO. Go get CISO on whatever set top box you got. Go to CISO.com and check it out on Thursday. And and, it, and if you want to and you haven't yet, uh, the uh, we have an episode of of the show up now. Uh, you can see it on YouTube. I I put uh, a link to it on McElroyShows.com. Um, and and you can watch a full episode now wherever you are. So go enjoy sorry, that. Sorry, by the way, sorry that the one that we put out has spiders in it. Mm-hmm. Apparently for some people, that's challenging. Mm-hmm. I've heard it's a challenging thing for some people. A lot of people not very pleased about that. And I, I am sorry. It is the only episode that. with spiders in it, though. I can guarantee that. Yes. 
Um, let's hit. Uh, can we do some fucking advice, please? Yeah. My husband calls petting the dog, rubbing the dog's fur. How can I make him stop? <laughs> That's from Dogs Deserve Dignity in Michigan. I don't know that this is like a full meaty question. So no. much as I just want to say to the question asker's husband, I respect you. Yeah. This idea of like, this was probably one time you meant to say like, I'm going to go pet the dog and you couldn't think of the word pet. And you said, I'm going to go rub the dog's fur and you fucking committed to it. And you're like, this is me now. I'm a man who pets dogs, I rub dogs fur from now on. That's me, my life. I, I have to say, I think that, you know, the question asker said they're, they call themselves dogs deserve dignity in Michigan. I would argue that this is a much more dignified way mm. of referring to the practice. Because by saying you're petting the dog, what you're saying inherently is like, I, I'm i petting my possession, I'm owning right. my possession. And now it's a, I'm, a pet. I'm massaging my friend. My friend has fur, just happens to have fur, and I'm rubbing it with my hand, which is an equal appendage to a paw. Mas- we are all on equal playing field here. I am going to go interact hair- with the dog. Mm. In an adult, consensual way. I'm going to massage my friend's hairy body in a way that we will both enjoy very you much. You know, and when you say it like that, that it could be anyone at that point. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that that's that that's not patronizing to the dog. I'm gonna go rub my friend's hairy body. That's universal. I'm feeding my friend some table trash. And mm-hmm. I yeah. know some do not approve, but this is a personal relationship between my friend and I, where I feed him trash mm. from the table. I'm, I'm watching to, my, my friend defecate in my yard. My friend looks hungry, so I'm gonna serve them up a tall bowl of stink cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna tie this rope around my friend's neck and walk him down the street. It's for my friend, though. because it's, 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 He'll see a car and he'll be murdered by the car by a person. So uh, the rope is for my friend. I hi, hi, thanks for seeing me on such short notice. Um, I need you to express my friend's anal glands, mm-hmm. and I need you to do it in a mature, consensual way because it's too yucky for me personally. Because we're friends, and it would be overstepping the line. And please don't make eye contact with my friend while you do it. He hates that. My friend ate my fucking car keys, and so. <laughs> Not really sure what to do about that. I was rubbing his hairy body, and I looked down, and my dang keys were gone. (laughs) Um, Do you guys want a Yahoo? This is good. Just keep doing this. You're fine. Um, This one was sent in by Aaron Keys. Thank you, Aaron. It's by Yahoo Answers user AGLU, who asks, Should it be illegal to seal someone's kill on Call of Duty? So I've just been playing some Call of Duty Black Ops 2 when this kid kept stealing my kills. It was the same person over and over. Every time I went in for a kill, this kid just ran in and took it. 11 assists I got. They should have been kills. So I think you should be put in prison for stealing someone's kills in an FPS. Remind me, which one is the Call of Duties? It's the one with the soldier men, but they have future guns. Gotcha. You know, the irony here is that it's illegal to steal someone's kill in a video game. But in real life, if you're about to kill someone and somebody else kills them first, that makes, like, that's suddenly illegal. Like, you're now legal. You're off yeah, the you're hook. Yeah, you're good to go. Because you didn't actually do the kill, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's ironic if you think about it. But if you want to get all the, I don't know, duty points mm-hmm. that you can use duty to dollars. buy. Duty dollars. that you can buy to, you know, buy new weed emblems. Mm-hmm. Weed like weed skins for your gun to turn your character into just a big three dimensional sort of ganja, ganja guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you can buy him for three thousand duty duty bucks. Um, you're gonna need to get those kills. And this this child is coming in and really just griefing him. And so like, can I put the kid in jail? Actual jail too. Like this person is talking about like real world physical. Oh. Jail, not just like Call no, of Duty jail. No, this is interesting, Travis. You've just given I, Justin and I work in the video games industry, um, and so we know the people to talk to. To we know the people to happen. talk to to get these sorts of ideas going because I think there should be a jail for 
every game and not like you get banned and you can't play the game i think if you do too much bad stuff um this I, I, maybe not stealing somebody's kill but if you call somebody many epithets then the next time you log in your weed shaped soldier man is just in a cage and there's like a little timer there that's like one month he's in the cage like Larry is real in the time cage. real time one month like yeah, real time one month. And yes. and you can walk around in the cage and try to find a way out, but there is no way out. You're in the cage. Is there an opportunity, Griffin, there for like a time off for good behavior thing where where like they bring other people to the cage that you can talk to and say, Let me tell you why I'm in here and you shouldn't like make fun of people online and be mean to them and like yes. maybe that shaves some time off of your sentence. When you when you log on, the cage is also filled with orphans, and there is a book there in the cage. Mm-hmm. So if you read to them yeah. stories, you know, read them the line the Witch of the Wardrobe or whatever, you can shave some time off your sentence. And the orphans well, again, are real re- time. You got to really real time. read it. Real time, real orphans. Plug in your microphone. I know. Go for, dig it out. Go to read to orphans. Listen, I have some advice for you, question asker. Get good. Oh yeah. Just close the murder deal. Yeah. You opened you you opened the store of murdering and you didn't stick around mm-hmm. to close up for the day. There's probably a better metaphor there. But get good. Yeah. Scrub. Get get, hey, get just get scrub, good. If, Let's just close the deal. If you would have given them one right in the old brain box, they wouldn't have time to get this get stolen. You know what I mean? Can't steal a headshot. Can't steal, can't steal a no scope. Ooh, so let may I pitch a zag? Um, yeah, sure. Should we all get like fucking MLG pro level Call of Duty gamers? No, no, no. Start a Follow, clan or Question Asker follows this kill stealer around oh. and steals their kill stealings. Like, oh. like you have a sniper rifle like right over their shoulder as they're pointing a sniper rifle. They can't see you because they're looking down their sniper rifle, and it's like, oh, he's about poof, and I stole his kill. Kill steal it back. I'm the Robin Hood of Call of Duty. Sort of. Uh, yeah, Maybe I steal. I steal the kill from the kill stealer. Steal. Fuck. <laughs> Got away Maybe. from me. What if everybody just waits for everybody else to initiate the fight? There's only kill stealing, and then nobody starts it. It's like, oh, it's Reservoir we Dogs. Just, uh, why don't we talk it out? You know, like maybe we just talk through it whatever's going on between the red guys and the blue guys. Maybe we just figure it out. I like that. It's like, hey, rather than kill stealing, let's just sit down and rap about this beef. Yeah. You know? Let's wrap Check. this beef up and sell it. Check this out. New Call of Duty game comes out next month because I'm pretty sure them shits are coming out on a monthly basis now. You pick it up. You get it together with your friends. You get all your stuff together, your four loco. It's a time for a, a night full of shooting and hooting. And you go in... And you play a met round, and you get you do okay. You get like six kills. Your friend Benny gets fourteen. You're like, damn, Benny. He's like, I just have it. I just have it. <laughs> and then the match ends. And you're like, time to rack up my duty bucks and see how well I did. And you and all of your teammates and everybody you played against are all in small jail cells. And there's just like, a, I think there's just a guy that comes and walks through the jail, like the warden, and he's just like, what were you guys doing in there? You can't just kill. You can't just shoot and kill and hurt. So what did you do? Six kills. That's fucking fourteen to life. So that's pretty. That's not great. Benny. Oh my god. Benny, actually, come with me. Uh, Benny, it's it's we save this for only the most the most brutal monsters that that rear their heads in this game. But you need to come with me now, Benny. Maybe you follow after this person steals your kill. Just get right up in their face and scream, "What did you do? <laughs> that was a that was a living person." Yeah, you can't just snuff. Out, I was just trying to scare him. You can't just snuff out a human life like that, you animal. And then follow him around for the rest of the game, shouting that kind of thing. Yeah, that's gonna hurt their KD for sure. Mm-hmm. Or at least hurt their feelings. It's gonna hurt their KD Lang. <laughs> Read another one. I work at a software company, and we have a communal kitchen with shared dishes. During the other day. During lunch the other day, sorry, I caught a coworker lifting a plate to his face and licking it clean. I had a full-on panic attack in my head as I watched in horror as he continued unabated in his quest to get every morsel of sauce off a plate that I could very well be using tomorrow. My question is this. Are you hiring? (laughs) Because now I need a new job. And that's from Clean Plate Club in Atlanta, Georgia. Holy 
Holy Come, shit. No, no. Yes. No. What? No. What, Griffin? What? How could you? I if feel you betrayed even... by you, Griffin. Okay, fine. But if you go to a fucking nice restaurant... And you and you see how I did the the accent there. That's how you know how nice this restaurant was. Uh-huh. And you fucking <laughs> get yourself a bayou. You get yourself a fucking etouffee, <laughs> gumbo. gumbo. Get yourself an etouffee, <laughs> and you f- you finish the etouffee. But you don't want to waste the good hard work done by the sauce doctor. Then you fucking lick it all up good, and then guess what? You're gonna put it in like a hot, steamy, soapy box, Griffin, and then Griffin, all of the Griffin. all of your tongue stuff is just gonna be gone in the soapy box. Griffin, this person did not go to the Cajun kitchen. This person fucking microwaved a Stouffer's lasagna, and like you don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know that. You don't know. I that. do know that because they were in the break room at at work. <laughs> like this was not okay. Even so, Griffin, are you telling me it is your belief that this work break room has a mm. functioning sanitizing dishwasher in it, and not just a sink that people lazily rinse dishes in and then immediately put back in the cabinet? I'm. I don't know. There's a lot of variables here. But I, even if it was just you run hot soapy water over it, their tongue stuff is gone. How are you, how are you guys this upset about this? Because I know Griffin, and even worse, I sort of know. Because if all the plates look the same, <laughs> I like they're all bad now. They're well, all. What are you really gonna do? Well, you gonna fucking walk up to them and grab the plate and fucking shatter it on the floor and be like, "I hope you enjoyed the the <laughs> sauce doctor's good work." But th- yes. now. <laughs> What? What? Okay, we're glossing over the point. That this is unacceptable workplace behavior. There is also like, that you can't watch someone do that and then like. I guess we're teaming up on the new project for the boss <laughs> together. And also, I just watched you lick a plate clean like my friend who is a dog, <laughs> like my hair friend, like my hairy friend. Um. So, uh, guys. Uh, close your eyes and just think of have you ever had something where the good stuff wasn't immediately fork accessible and you had to go hair friend on the plate to get to receive the sauce doctor's blessing then you then you mop it up with a bread buddy crusty Kristen. bread a nice crusty bread okay so they just have they just have sauce bread they have like you a plan bowl ahead of... griffin you have okay. to plan ahead if you know you... that you got a good sauce from the sauce doctor you got to bring a crusty bread buddy and plan the fuck ahead you can't could just you... f- fucking like live in the moment and lick it clean could you bring crusty bread to this person say hey hey you said looking i saw you licking the plate like a toddler would you maybe enjoy a baguette <laughs> for next time can i maybe interest you in this for next time forever and also, can you go back and find the plates that you've ever licked in your life and shatter them, please? The only place that this is okay, work behavior. This is all right work behavior. If you work at some place like Pixar, where everything is just a little bit more cash, you know? <laughs> Everybody's just razor scootering around, and they've made their cubicles look like tiki huts. And, like, you know, they've got a ping pong table in the break room. Okay, lick it clean. Fine. We're all in Hawaiian shirts anyways. It's all higgledy-piggledy up in the air. If you, you, nerv- are- you nervously walk into John Lasseter's office and he's, I don't know, he's hes in there eating, eating himself a good plate of gumbo. And you're like, hey, I've got a good pitch for a movie. And he's like, oh, just one second. And then he licks the plate clean because he's John Lasseter and he can do whatever. He's one it of takes those, 15 minutes takes in complete silence. Complete silence. <laughs> and he leaves one little scrap of the sauce doctor's blessing right there. And he's like, what? Oh, yeah, it sounds, oh, it sounds good. What are, you, what are you talking about? It's cats, but they are firefighters. Yeah, sure. What What the fuck ever? We did airplanes as firefighters, so I don't see why not. Anyway, come on over here. And uh, if I guess if you want me to green light this, why don't you get up on this sauce doctor's blessing with your dog tongue? What did you say to me, John? Lick this up with your doggy tongue if you want me to make your cat your cat firefighter movie. You're a good hairy boy. Come Why on, don't you hairy lick boy. the sauce blessing from this from this terrain? 
But it's, see, it's s- a trick. It's a trick t- test. You go over there to lick it. But before you do, you realize that he has licked the sauce, the remaining sauce, into the perfect shape of, like, the next, like, Nemo-esque, yeah. like, hit character. We're like, oh, sauce boy. And then that's, like, all over bedspreads and, mm-hmm. like, lunch boxes. Sauce boy everywhere. And you John lick- fucking Lasseter, and he's a genius. And you slurp up the sauce doctor's blessing right off this plate. Mm-hmm. And John says... I could never make a movie with such a nasty boy. And then he drives and then he drives off in the bumper car he's been sitting in the whole time. <laughs> he, and, he, and he Snapchatted you doing it. And he put it on his Snapchat. So now everybody's seeing you. Oh, ruined. damn it. Got me again, John. Yeah, you put that on the gram, huh? You make such damn. you make great movies, John, but you, the, your Machiavellian plots in the workplace, <laughs> they need to stop. Hey, and also, John, for future reference, John, you could have just fired me. Yeah. You're the boss of the thing. Yeah. Like, if you didn't like my work. Please just fire me next time. John. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second. It's okay. Hello? Oh, it's really John Lasseter. Oh, you hacked our Skype call the whole... You were listening the whole time? You do want to make the Cat Firefighter movie starring starring me and... Okay. I have a friend, Joe Panigliano. Uh, he's, he's great. He was in The Matrix. You think we could get him? We can get him in as... Ta- Taz? Ta- Tabby... Ta- We'll figure out the name later, John. But yeah, I'm the very tabby excited. Tabby Cabby. The Tabby Cabby. Pitch tabby that. Cabby. A, he drives. Sorry, tra- what was that, Travis? Give me a. He drives wait, a Travis, cab? I'm on the fucking phone with John Lasseter. Give it to me tabby now. Tabby who drives a cab. Tabby Cabby. He's in, a ca- he's in a cab and he drives around. I'm off the I'm off the project. Okay, bye. Fuck. Damn it, Travis. Fuck. That was my one We'll pitch fucking it to chance. DreamWorks, Griffin. We'll pitch it to DreamWorks. Ah, oh, uh, sorry, guys. One hold second. on one second. Hold on one second, everybody. Tess? The real Taz, Tasmanian Devil. Oh, it's the cartoon Taz. Justin, yeah. can you can you put it on speaker so we can hear both? Yeah, sides? just put it on speaker quick. I want to hear him. Yeah, <laughs> let me put it on speaker. Hold on. <laughs> well, that's un it's uncalled for. Yeah. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say we stole any of your jokes for the show it, when you and I were. T- <laughs> okay. Well, that's. I mean, that's. That's racist. You know, you know that that's. No, I want to work this out with you too. Yeah. Okay. Let's find something. How about instead of a protracted legal battle, you and I find something that we can work together on soon. Justin, 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 pitch him. Well, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, thank you for calming down. First off, thank you. Uh, Travis, did you have something you want me to ask the Tasmanian devil? Pitch him the, the cat firefighting movie with the tabby cabby. Yeah, tabby okay. cabby. Give him tabby cabby. Hey, I had a project <laughs> where, you know, uh, Lassie? John Lasseter. Yeah, Lassie. I, I, he, uh, so here's the pitch. Tabby cabby is a cat that drives a cab. Mm-hmm. And Real there's an arc. Real him in. You know, there's an arc. Of course, he goes to... China mm-hmm. and oh. there's lots. Give there's him, give him the name. We got there. Joey Pants attached, and we got pant, Joey Pants is in basically. We the the ink is not spilled yet on that one, but Whoa, that sounds pretty intriguing. Yeah, I thought it sounded pretty intriguing too. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. All yeah. right, the pretzels are making me. <laughs> All fun. right, love that yeah, bet. love that gag. Oh, we anyway, f- uh, Taz, I will talk to you so soon. I'm doing the um, podcast. I know, still, believe it or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, bye. 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 You hang up first. No, you hang up. <laughs> no, you hang up. <laughs> Why don't you guys just say that? Was it, I'm at a center. And it's, we don't hang up. We just go to the money zone. That sounds pretty good, Taz. Let's all go together. Can I tell you all about a thing that's very important, uh, very close to me, literally and emotionally? Yeah. Yeah. Me, I'm talking about MeUndies. Oh. Um, basically, my whole collection now is MeUndies. Thank you, MeUndies, for sending me MeUndies to wear. Um, and even if you weren't sending me MeUndies, I'd be buying MeUndies because they are um, they're life-changing. They have changed a sort of how I even think about my zone. Um, they are seriously soft, feel good undies. They deliver them right to your door, made from sustainably sourced micromodal, 
and it's the fabric three times softer than cotton. And these are just luxurious uh, uh, pantaloons that you can wear, and they come with fun pants. designs. And you can get what? Joey pants. Just we've been talking about Joey pants a lot, so now I All will right. never not be able to think about Joey underpants. Okay, fine. Um, okay. Uh, so Me Joey's is offering you twenty percent off your first pair. Uh, if you use their special URL, meundies.com slash my brother, you'll get 20% off your first pair. Um, so go ahead, go revamp your whole underwear drawer. You've earned it. Zag on them in 2017. Throw all your underwear away. But do it like before you've made this purchase. And so like when you get the MeUndies in, it's like uh, it's like a refreshing spring breeze. Um, once again, that's meundies.com slash my brother. Meundies.com slash my brother. Get 20% off your first pair. I would like to tell you about uh, I would say at this point, a my brother, my brother and me favorite, um, mm. pretty pretty long term uh, money zone buddy. And here's the thing: I'm trying to get fit. It's a new year, zag zag zag. Trying to lose a few lbs, but mostly just stay healthy. And you know, sometimes you want to have a snack, and you go to the pantry, you go to the fridge, and you know, you see that bag of chips or like a thing of cookies, and you just start eating. And when you're done, you don't feel good. You might feel full, but you don't feel good. Well, let me suggest Nature Box. Nature Box is the snack food you want, but it's not junk food. It's food that you can eat, it tastes great, and you feel good after it's done. So you're not just like eating, you know, dry styrofoam health chips or whatever. You're having like actual snacks. You're having some like dark chocolate nom noms. You're having some uh you know some lentil rings sweet salty spicy whatever you want and right now you uh, and and it's affordable but right now you could save even more nature box is offering our fans 50 percent off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash my brother it's naturebox.com slash my brother for 50 percent off your first order go check it out start snacking right today um, I juice, give me this personal message, please. And I'm only making you do it because the 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 from field that lists who the message is from. There's like 40 names in there, and I I want I just really want you to, to tackle it. Okay. This is a message for John Newell. It's from Belwick. Nope, I already fucked, fucked up. The first first name. one up. Let me try again. You just edit that out. Nope. This is a message for John Newell. It's from Belric, Rulga, Resin, Cephalus, Claria. Vespidae, Achia, Callius, Garvin, Gwendolyn, Alfgramir, and Bjorn. If this message had popped up on Adventure Zone, like that'd be a pretty easy, like, oh, this is a D and D group, um, which it, which it is, but it's also like the bigger. Can you imagine if we did Adventure Zone and there were twelve fucking people on the call each week? This is so many adventurers. It's a hell of a thing. We're crossing time, planes, and storylines to congratulate you on officially becoming. A doctor of dungeoneering. Um, we mean literature. We pledge to keep derailing your meticulous storylines and fucking up your beautiful world, building with our cults, chaos, cheese, crazy stealth rolls, and quest for immortality for many years to come. We love you. Um, congratulations, John, from Doctor John, Doctor John, from from one um from one DM to the other. Although, again, like this is a Herculean effort. That you've done here, because three- maybe they're doing. I've done this before, where I had like a D and D league where we had like ten people, and we would swap in whoever was available that night, so we didn't have oh. to like wait. So, and then like we would just level people up accordingly when they would step in. That would um, be cool so, if I could do that with you guys. Um, just replace us. Well, just like if they have a bad week, it's like, well, let's, let's just try out somebody else. Let's give Rothfuss a chance. Let's see what he does in there. Uh, so congratulations, Dr. John. Sounds like you're in the right place at the right God, time. God, Justin. Joe, may the force be with you, Sidon. I've got a message for you, and it's from Sarah. You're a wizard. Uh, Grease. Uh, Grease. Grease. They, it says pronounced Grease at, right after Grice. it, Justin. Grease. Sarah. Grease. Grease. Grease almighty, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. Happy New Year. Birthday. Valentine's Day. Day we met. Special fun day or second anniversary, whether it's January, February, April, November, or December, I've got us covered. Good. After five years of friendship, I'm proud of the nerdy, loving, healthy relationship we've built together. I love you as much as I love hit points or Harry Potter. 
Prob- it's HP. So it's probably just, Harry Potter. Probably. I Harry love you Potter. as much as I love. I love you as much as I love Hewlett Packard, uh-huh. and you love Star Wars <laughs> combined. Thank you for being you, Boo. And um, so, it's just a nice message. There's nothing to really congratulate them on. Um, so birthday i guess it seems like with the month for the birthday so I, happy birthday joe i love you as much as i love harvey purvis who <laughs> is an accountant living in san bernardino thank you harvey i love you very much hello and welcome to pod phone what type of podcast are you looking for you have chosen funny podcasts about bad movies rated r may we recommend the Flop House. Three friends talk about bad movies and make each other and you laugh. Rated R. The Flop House is playing at your ears. If you download it right now or whenever. Rated R. To purchase tickets to The Flop House, you don't need to do that. Just download it. The Flop House. Rated R for nudity, I guess. Uh, do you guys want to get who? Yeah. yeah. Um, got a few good ones. This one was sent in by, and I apologize for how bad I'm going to pronounce this, but from uh, Aulia Irham Wisesa, who, uh, thank you, Aulia. It's from Yahoo Answers user. They are anonymous. Uh, let's call them Todd asks, would a toaster still work in a freezer? Hmm. Their, their subhead for this is, would this create cold toast, which is fucking stupid. But the good question is there at the top. You put a fucking toaster in a freezer, run the mm-hmm. in, okay. run the extension cord in there. You put some good bread in there. You click it down. What even happens, right? Because you say, like, if you think, like, it, get, it would get hot, well, then the freezer hasn't done its job. But okay, if you okay, say it gets okay. cold, then the toaster hasn't done its job. Let me, let me, okay, let me say there is a factor here, which makes this, like, more of a brain puzzle to me. Yeah. If, if you immediately take the toaster, put it in the freezer, press the thing down, I think, like, yes, it, it's still going to work because the freezer has not had time. But if you put the toaster in the freezer for, say, like, 20, 30 minutes, oh, then cool do it. it. Yeah, so like the coils, those toaster those coils, toasty coils, they done cooled down, and so it it might come to room temperature. So you might end up with room temperature bread because it's a timed thing. Unless you have a toaster that operates on some kind of heat sensor, I think it's a timed thing. So you would end up with like the coils would reach room temperature, but not necessarily hot enough to toast the bread. Possibly, potentially. I'm you're just talking that, out of I'm you're just talking that, out of your ass though, Mr. Wizard. Yeah, I'm worried in having this discussion we're ruining the new season of Bill Nye the Science Guy that's coming out. Like first up, <laughs> Bill's listening to this and he's like, fuck, that was like first episode. We're three quarters of the way through shooting. Um I don't think you could cl- Okay. But you couldn't close the freezer all the way. So you're gonna have well, I mean it would seal around like a, 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 a small thin enough cord like it was that like that seal thing that is on freezers would it would still seal around it. I don't think that's a fact. Uh, that's a fucking okay. easy out Justin. you try to fucking like cheat your way out of this question. What's gonna happen in there? Because uh, I think it, I, I, we're worried about whether or not the bread's gonna turn into toast. I'm on some like this is gonna be like we're inventing time travel like we're on some like accidental weird science Steins gate shit like. I'm worried that like it's gonna open up a a a black hole of temperature. I just don't think it'll get as toasty. Mm, like Justin. it'll be less toasty toast, right? <sighs> Probably less toasty, I would think. Why does like warmed through, but not as toasty? Why does one of them win? Is like because in your mind you're saying the freezer beats the toaster. Why? I think freezer beats toaster. It's bigger and it's been doing it for longer. Like the. I've been keeping things frozen in here for years. Yeah. You cannot come into my house and try to toast things and expect it to fly. It's not going to fly with me. Okay. I'll get colder okay. if I have to. Okay, Justin, what about this? Imagine, if you will, we're going to get into some, this is all mind puzzles and not real. Keep that in mind. I realize it's, that it's, we- It's real to me, no, damn Griffin, it. Griffin, we're about to go on a flight of fancy. Fuck, buckle in. Oh, fucking <laughs> All right, Miss Frizzle, take me. What if, instead of- Toaster in freezer. We had a giant toaster 
that we put a freezer, a smaller Inside. freezer in. We started the toaster. Would the freezer still keep things cold inside of it? That's a fucking banger of a question, Travis. <laughs> because I I posit that Justin is correct in a roundabout way that if you put something inside another thing, the bigger thing containing it will always be dominant because it is right. bigger and containing the And inner it's been vessel. in the game for longer. I yeah. don't want to discount savvy. I, I feel like if you put a toaster in a okay, if you put a freezer in a giant toaster, mm-hmm. I feel like the freezer is still going to get it done. But every time you use the toaster, the freezer is going to be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> like I just got it cold in here." Yeah. And you mm-hmm. ruined everything again and you refreeze it, you're definitely going to get some ice crystals. That's going to like when a, that's going to be a big th- problem. Uh, but I feel like the freezer won't give up. Like the freezer would never quit. Always trying to get things cold again after the toaster did its did its, did dark its work. thing. Well, is it possible that we get that cold, crunchy toast? Like, is it possible that this mm. is just a new fucking molecular gastronomy thing where it's like this toast isn't burned or cooked at all, but it's crunchy, but it's cold. It's crunch like toast, but cold like iced cream. If, if you ho- if you toasted a like toaster pastry toaster strudel you know it's got the hot filling and the hot flaky crust right yeah yeah but then then immediately did a quick dip in some liquid nitrogen yeah. would the inside remain molten hot yes while the probably. outside was frozen i think so that that would be a take i would i would jam on I that would eat that i, I mean i'd probably die because i think maybe the liquid nitrogen yeah, would be bad poison. for my tum tum bad for you um i this reminds me of the scene in the brave little toaster where the brave little toaster went up to the freezer and was like one v one me motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> do you, I can i do it can do i do this. a different like i didn't think that that yahoo was gonna have many legs and i also feel this way about this one can i do two like a two for, two for one yeah two for one sale uh this one was sent by rachel rosen game recognized game rachel rosen thank you rachel it's by yahoo answers user j who asks in Italian cuisine, is it appropriate to mix two different types of pasta? I had lunch at a recently opened restaurant in my area, and one of the pasta dishes I saw served at the table diagonally for me had both spaghetti and fessucine, uh, maybe tagliatelle, in white sauce with clams. I'm not sure what it's called. First thing that came to mind was, wow, that's different, but the more I think about it, mixing two types of pasta together doesn't sound right at all. To reiterate my question, in Italian Whoa. cuisine, is it appropriate to mix two different types of pasta? <laughs> Um, I read this, and I don't know how much there is to talk about here, but I also imagined um, spaghetti macaroni together, just chilling together in a bowl with some sauce. And I was like, hey, that's the most whack shit I think I've ever heard of in my entire life. Yeah, good luck finding which fork to use. Mm. Because do I use my macaroni fork or do I use my linguine fork? I, I, I don't know. There's also different techniques. There's different pursuit uh, techniques. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> pursuit. If you do the swirl... You know you do that. You know that big silly swirl yeah. that people like to do, where they do a big silly swirl and then they put it on a spoon and eat it like that. Like a, that's one way of doing like it. Like they Donald made it like Duck style, like yeah, like they made a pasta nest that they're gonna roost in for a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna get. You may be get. You may get a macaroni, like ma- mm-hmm. like singular. I don't know what the singular of macaroni is, but you might get one macaroni in there. Uh, you know, tops. I would like to be in the kitchen of this restaurant where, like, the chef reached for the box of pasta or whatever and was like, ooh, there's not enough of this dish. And there was, like, a solid, like, five-minute, like, rushed, like, heated but whispered conversation about, like, can we convince, a, like, a customer that mixing two pastas is a thing and not just because we ran out of this kind of pasta halfway through the dish. It's like, oh, yeah, sure. uh, that's a hard is, sell. Uh, I call this uh, Fettigetti. Enjoy. <laughs> I love Guy Fettigetti. I, I've been watching a lot of his <laughs> stuff uh, since we got cable. Um, now, exception to this, if we could somehow thread the most tender angel hair pasta through the juiciest macaroni noodles. And <laughs> into a beautiful necklace. To a beautiful edible necklace that we would oh. serve to you on my, on while well, I'm wearing it. And you would have to. It's the <laughs> on your friend's hairy body. This is my this is my naked brother Griffin. I've coded him in chains. Hello, um, <laughs> thank you, Griffin. Griffin, I did ask you not to speak. Please, you'll move the noodles. Uh, I've I've layered him much like chain mail, but it's noodle mail. Mm. It's noodle mail armor where I've threaded lovingly 
threaded spaghetti through hmm. the macaroni noodles and made him sort of an edible armor. So now he's just sort of a noodle boy mm-hmm. for you to enjoy. Enjoy and this yes, noodle boy. I am working on a jingle. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 the, I don't have a tune yet, but it's coming along. Uh, one, noodles of mo- noodles on this beautiful boy. It's something like that. Uh, just one moment. I'm all plain. I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Time to get a visit from the sauce doctor. And then the sauce doctor comes and just dumps it on me. And then I'm ready to go. It's gonna get messy, I say. See, I love this because this this is both fitting in the most upscale uh, Italian restaurant, and also could double as like a, a Cirque du Soleil performance. So it's mm-hmm. like it's a performance art right there at your table, and people mm-hmm. love that because sometimes it's a magician, or sometimes it's like a fun band who like walks around the restaurant and plays, and sometimes it's a naked boy wearing macaroni <laughs> mithril, and you just eat it off of him. What's hard is though, you know that eventually Griffin's gonna get some job offers from from somebody else, maybe Pasta Garden or Marty mm-hmm. Scorsese, and he's gonna have to quit. And there's gonna be a new boy, and everybody's gonna say, "I really liked the flavor's different." I think yeah. off the new boy than the old one. I prefer the old Noodle Boy. I like, like Noodle Boy it, classic. The old classic the noodle old boy Noodle flavor. Boy Griffin had a almost like a Parmesan grime. <laughs> So I guess I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm so excited about this question. Please. The other day I was spending quality time with one of my best friends when he mentioned that he was starting to cook breakfast for himself. This was fine. But the way he said it struck me as as odd. Fuck. I've been frying eggs instead of just having cereal. Yeah, but cereal is good, I replied. I do like it. Nothing beats a nice warm bowl of cereal. I inquired further and ascertained that he has been microwaving the milk for his normal breakfast oh cereal God, his entire it. life. Oh my God, what? No. Help? Am I good? And that's from Toasty in Toledo. I love that this person recognizes this is such a breach of trust that they are curious if they are good. They are good. For if they are it. good by association. The answer is no. The answer is Obviously. No. You are ruined. What could you have be? Why? Who did this to you? Who hurt you? Back in the day, de- someone did this to you I, as a child. I'll tell, I'll tell you who did it to them as a child. Fucking Coco Eats. <gasps> Coco Eats did their dark things, and they're like, "This is this is gonna be your this is gonna be your jam. It's like cereal, but hot. It could also just be oatmeal, like oatmeal in general. They're like, mm, this is good, but what if checks? No, nah." <laughs> Nah. They do they do it with grape nuts. People will ch- sell you this on grape nuts where if you heat heat it up, it's just I mean, hi, just it's just in here. If you pour milk on grape nuts and heat it up, that's gruel. That's yeah. gruel that you make at home. It's, it's also just sad. Fucking, like yeah, it's, they, like, it's like you're, you're having grape nuts and it's time to spice it up for yourself. The like, reason like, the no, grape just, nuts you just sit down and eat it as quickly as you can and move on with your day. The reason that grape nuts tells you to do that is because maybe you'll heat the milk up too much and burn your tongue so bad that you don't realize how fucking shitty grape nuts taste. That's why they tell you to do that. The fact that you are doing this to cinnamon toast crunch when I could eat the cinnamon toast crunch with a cold milk <laughs> makes me so angry. Do you know this falls into a category? It's very slim category but a category of like breakfast that then ask you to take one more step like before frosted mini wheats were many and it was just one giant wheat that you yourself were supposed to break up like no the process is pour milk eat there is no other step in the middle now of that this. is still how shredded wheat is distributed yes i will i hate I will, it i hate that's it. i i i agree with you also i think people eat shredded wheat hot I think that's another thing that no. people are doing. I'd fuck with that. I get down with that. Yeah, and I, I actually so. like the hot grape nuts too. Uh, side you block. have okay, just so added a second. Lose. You have shred the wheat yourself and then heat it. That's two more steps yeah. in what is supposed to be a. Oh no! I've only got two minutes before the carpool gets here. Like right. milk cereal glur, 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 done out the door. Um, there's. I think I could get behind this under the shredded wheats um, clause, but also if you worked. At like uh, if you were like a construction worker in Buffalo and like you showed up to the site and they were like, hey, Denny, what are you eating today? And, and you were like, I'm having some hot rings. And they're like, hot rings? What are those? I heated up my Cheerio milk and you slobber it out of the thing on a cool blustery winter day. I think that that would be acceptable. Hot rings for a construction worker is acceptable in Buffalo. But that's about that's basically it. Otherwise, I don't want to hear about your hot Cheerios. Can I? That's sort of. 
This is sort of like the first time I tried to make warm milk for myself because I'd been sold that as a sleep aid. And then I tried to drink it with my own mouth. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, it, it was, it's absolutely repellent. And the fact that you would bring something like that into the blessed bond of cereal and cold milk is honestly hugely offensive to me. It's hugely offensive. Can I read another question that makes me really happy? And we're, we're, as we near the end of February, the February question list will fall off. And I just want to say this out loud. I want to put this out in the world. We don't even have to discuss it so yeah, much secret, as I just want to say shit. Today, as I was painting sets for the school play, my drama teacher came in to get a can of paint and spilled it all over the floor. She then said, ugh, this makes me so bad I could, so mad I could bust a nut. I think she thinks bust a nut is an angry version of the phrase bust a gut. It is. I I told her to never say that phrase ever again, but she just laughed and took it as old people like you shouldn't use slang. My question is, how do I make my 60-year-old teacher never say bust a nut ever again without having to explain to her what it means? And that's from, and I still have to clean up the paint. There's a typo in this, and... I believe the typo is when you said don't. Yeah. And it said as much as humanly fucking possible, get your 60 year old teacher to say bust a nut. This, this woman is a walking story. She is a walking story that she gifts to people who are around when she does something that makes her angry. And she says the bad, wrong, very, very funny, good thing. Assumedly, Um, assumedly (laughs) she's using the wrong thing. And it is, it is very selfish of you to say, I would like to be the last recipient of this story. Because it, we might get another question. We've probably gotten questions about this very person before. You don't want to You don't want to be the person that brings that story to an end. You are also in a position where in the middle of class, you, you could get into a fake fight with somebody and yell, it, one more word out of you and I am going to bust a nut in this place. <laughs> and your teacher would just be lolling. Like your teacher would be loving it. And yeah. everyone would, would, would look at you. Miss Stevens like, is cool as shit. She's just laughing this off. Yeah. I thought she'd give him a pink slip, but no, no dice. She's, She's loving, loving it. it. Maybe we should all talk about busting a nut. And now it's a thing. That's the thing is now you have the opportunity to like the next time you get mad with a group of friends to say, Ugh, this is making me so mad I could bust a nut. And everyone says, excuse me, what? Sorry. And then you say, ah, okay, thank you for inquiring. And then you tell them the story. And mm-hmm. now th- this is weird because you can travel back in time to make this phrase make sense the way she's using it. Because now you're going to start this, and in 20 years, people will be using bust a nut to yeah. describe how mad they are. are and she started that. Are you suggesting this person contort the fabric of language around this person yes. rather than correct them? Inception. This is Inception 2, busting a nut. So you <laughs> it keep all that, just you, comes back around. You do this nut busting chuckle routine for mm-hmm. like a month, and like a month later, in that drama class, your friend Derek is like, "Man, I'm I'm so frustrated over in here. I'm about to jizz." And your teacher's like, "Derek, <laughs> leave the principal's office now. We don't use words like that. No, <laughs> no. We don't say jizz in this class. We don't say jizz in the. You made me so frustrated. I'm about to seriously bust a nut right here." <laughs> yeah. What are you confronting your teacher about? I was like, uh, "Miss Stevens, um, bust a nut." means and she's like i know exactly what it means hilarious right it's and good, like, right? oh shit <laughs> <laughs> miss stevens is funny as fuck <laughs> that it oh my god that i can't wait to be 60 now i'm gonna run this con on everybody <laughs> oh she doesn't know oh i know oh i know oh, i know i've always known <gasps> always known inception what Two. a good teacher what a good what a good time what a great That's teacher awesome. i remember what a great teacher it, Thank you for meeting me, President Obama. I was wondering if you could call my favorite teacher. Um, it would be very, it would be very special to her if you could just give. Sure. Her what her. kind of impact did she have on your life? Well, all right. So check this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get Joey in here. He's gonna love this. <laughs> Whatever. Joey's the one that convinced her. Conv- <laughs> Joey oh, comes in. He's like, "Yeah, bust a nut means you're angry, right?" Right. <laughs> Joey. Joey, you got me. Again. I, by the way, I just want everybody to know I'm not going to die on this nut busting cross to change the language to contort around your teacher. But I will not give up busting nut. <laughs> no, it's an important Justin, phrase Justin, for what it means. Your, your, your obstinance is making me so angry I could bust a nut. 
I don't stop. Like, don't do it. Because what you're going to do is this will not extend beyond our uh, our community. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just going to lose the ability to tell whether people are angry or horny. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> or both. Or both in some cases. That's going to do it for us. I think. Yeah, we're done. That's the end of this podcast for this week. All right. So I, we this is our big pitch, okay? <laughs> if you like us at all... Um, We've got a TV show coming out on CISO, which is a, a comedy streaming service run by NBC. Um, it's at CISO.com is where you can sign up and what all. Uh, but there is also an Apple TV app. There's a Roku app. There's a iOS app. Uh, it is it is US only. But if you could just go ahead and go watch our TV show, it comes out February 23rd. And uh, we would really, we would really appreciate it. Um, we think you'll like it. We also just, uh, we have a ton of people on our Facebook group. We have uh, a spinoff Facebook page for specifics about the TV show because not everybody can watch it yet. And we don't want to spoil anything or what have you. So um, if you search for MBMBAM TV show, I think it pops up there on the on the book. So uh, you can sign up for that if you want to talk about the show. And just to clarify, because w- we made that TV show thing. So if you... Um, try to post stuff on about the TV show on the regular podcast group. It, it's gonna get denied. We like we want to make sure that we keep that specific free. stuff. Yeah. Specific stuff about the episodes that are that are going up. Um, not maybe not more general things, but um, I just also want to say like just the, the 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 absolute fact of the matter is like we would not have had this opportunity. If it weren't for you all um, through over the past almost seven years, um, spreading the word about the show, listening to the show, reviewing the show, all that stuff. Um, And we really owe it to you and we'll be forever indebted to you. And we hope we made something that will um, delight you because that was the absolute 100 percent only ideal that we had in mind when we were making the show. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And and. Just as a reminder, I also want to say uh, the mods, um, Rachel and Wes and Anthony and Lucy and Stormy, um, who are mods on the uh, podcast group, are also the mods on the TV show group. Um, and they're working really hard, um, but you know it, it takes a while to sort through all the membership requests because we want to make sure that we keep... Uh, you know, that we don't get spam accounts in there and everything. And they also work really hard to sort through everybody's posts. And it can take a while. Um, and we've given them fairly specific uh, guidelines as far as, like, what kind of stuff should be approved and what shouldn't. So yeah. um, just know it can be, you know, you might have be, to wait be, a while. And please posts be, might get denied. But Yeah, please be patient with them. They're, they're working really, really um, hard. And it is a, a completely thankless job. Um, but we we sure appreciate like we literally that. don't thank them. Yeah, no, not at but all. This, I thank you all very much. Um, I want to thank I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a part off the album, putting the days to bed. It's also the theme song for the TV show. I saw a lot of people like excited that we got to use it for that for that uh, for the TV show when the the premiere episode came out. Um, and we were super excited too, because like it would have been weird if I'm like, and now my bim bam, bing bang, bingy gong, can't let's give it a bit, 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 like some shitty song. That was what I think a shitty song sounds like. Although really it was uh, kind of a banger. Like it had like a nice sort of. That was um, good. It wasn't bad. Yeah. It was Polyphonic Spree level right there. Um, So we have a live show in Austin in May. Oh, geez. Um, May, what is it? What day? What are we doing? I think 20th and 21st. Is that right? No. Yeah, that sounds no right. I'm not really quite sure. No one knows when, but so May, I believe it's May 20th and 21st. It is. That Saturday, right. Saturday the 20th and Sunday the 21st. Um, and those tickets are going on sale this week. Um, you know, the, uh, I know that I, I listen, it, you know, if they sell out, I know that sucks, but it, just in case, make sure, you know, know when it's going to happen, uh, be ready for it. Camp out on the website, I guess. Um, the link is going to be, uh, bit.ly forward slash Austin MB MB AM 2017 2017. Uh, and if you want to see Adventure Zone, that ticket link is going to be bit.ly slash Taz Austin 2017. Um, it's not up yet. I believe the tickets go on sale the 24th. Um, so uh, let me let me get the exact time for you so I can let yes. you know. Uh, they are going to go on sale 10 a.m. Central Standard Time 
Uh, what is that? No one knows what that is. That's the time zone our brother lives in Hi. that Austin exists in. So, so what's like 11 a.m. It's regular it's human normal, time? Here at normal time, minus one. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to go and see how Friday, uh, uh, the 24th, 10 a.m. Central time. Um, uh, bit.ly forward slash Austin MBMBAM 2017. Um, it's going to be fun. We're doing Bam Bam and Adventure Zone, so it'll be a hoot. Um, mm-hmm. So, y'all want that final? Hit me. So I sent it by Paige Andrews Johnson. Thank you, Paige. It's Yahoo Answers user. Another anonymous. We'll call him Hieronymus. Asks, <laughs> is it immature when a guy says penis power during sex? <laughs> <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. It's been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host the weekly comedy podcast, One Bad Mother. We celebrate our moments of parenting genius. As well as our failures. Just like, we're going to have hot dogs. And I'm like, no, we're having fun. Everybody loves hot dogs. Yeah. And he just like smashes that thing right on my chest. And then I'm just Uh, crying in the middle of like kid space while people are like literally dancing with their children. Parenting can be sad and painfully funny at the same time. So join us each week as we admit that this is hard, but we're getting really good at it. Find us at MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts.